Jurassic Park. You've seen it, I've seen it, it's a pretty good movie. It has a bunch of sequels, some of them are good, and some of them are, uh... Now one of the major themes in Jurassic Park is the whole mankind versus nature, and how if humans try to control nature, they will probably fail, and therefore, maybe don't bring back the dinosaurs. But, I'm sure many of us are wondering, just for curiosity's sake, could we though? Well, maybe yes, but not the Jurassic Park way. In Jurassic Park, they say they get their DNA from mosquitoes, and everyone just ticks their bingo cards and moves away. But put those cards away because pesky DNA doesn't quite work that way. Nothing lasts forever, and it seems DNA has a half-life of about 521 years, which means even in ideal conditions, all the bonds in the nucleotides would be destroyed after about 6.8 million years. In fact, the DNA might just be completely unreadable after 1.5 million years. And when did the dinosaurs bow out? Oof, so close. Now I know what some of you might be saying. Hmm, I guess you didn't hear about the blood cells from the T-Rex fossils from Montana. Well, let's talk about this a little bit. In the early 2000s, Dr. Mary Schweitzer examined a T-Rex leg bone that was found in Montana and the bone seemed to contain soft tissue inside, tiny blood vessels and proteins. Now, there has been a bit of a back and forth as to whether or not it was actually tissue from the T-Rex or it's just biofilm. But it seems the most recent studies suggest it is from the Rex. Wait, does that mean that the Earth is only a few thousand years? No, no it does not. If it is actually from the T-Rex, then it may have been preserved by protein cross-link mechanisms. Now you can read a paper all about it if you want, and if that sounds too boring, there's also a video you can watch. But that's not even relevant to us because red blood cells don't have any DNA, so throw that bingo card in its trash. Now in 2021, new reports came that the Chinese Academy of Sciences might have found preserved nuclei and chromatin fragments that could potentially hold preserved dinosaur DNA from a 128 million year old dinosaur femur. Now if they do, great, but given what we know about DNA, many other scientists are skeptical. Some think that it might just be microbes on the fossils that are being mistaken for genetic material from the dinosaurs. But either way, it's no problem, because that's not even how we plan to bring them back. The thing is, I never should have told you to throw away your bingo sheet, because we have dino DNA all around us, because birds are dinosaurs. And yes, they are dinosaurs. I know people in the comments tend to disagree with me. How can a bird be a dinosaur when the the term dinosaur means land lizard. A bird isn't a lizard. I don't think dino means land. But anyway, like I said, they plan to use existing birds. But who are they? Well, the project is being led by the paleontologist Jack Horner. And Jack was a mentor to Mary Schweitzer. And he's a bit of a controversial lad. He kind of sparked the T-Rex was only a scavenger thing, even though he admitted he only did it to spark arguments between his colleagues. He's also been a consultant on Jurassic Park and the Jurassic World series, which makes some people ask, then why don't the dinosaurs look more realistic? But hey, who knows how much say he really has. I don't know, I still think he's a cool guy. Now, in 2009, Jack released a book called How to Build a Dinosaur. Extinction doesn't have to be forever. Apparently he got the idea from an early version of a Jurassic Park 4 script about genetically modifying dinosaurs. The plan is take a bird, specifically a chicken, just because it's easy to get eggs from a chicken. So anyway, they have a lab set up right now working on it. They have a few geneticists and developmental biologists by using atavistic genes, genes that cause the reappearance of a trait that had been lost during evolution. So basically, even though a chicken is already a dinosaur, they want their chickenosaurus to resemble something more like the image that pops into our head when we think of a dinosaur, with arms instead of wings, teeth, a different shaped head, a longer tail, etc. Apparently the tail is the trickiest part. Mm. Now you might be wondering, who's funding this? Well, here's a twist. Most of the funding has come from George Lucas, using some of that Star Wars money to fund a real Jurassic Park. Now, while Jack Horner is the big name in this project, other scientists around the world have also made some progress. 
with a group figuring out how to turn the beaks of chicken embryos into a more dinosaur-like snouts, and at the University of Chile, geneticists have produced embryos with dinosaur-like legs and feet. So it seems like the ball is rolling. So when will the chickensaurus be ready? Well, according to some sources, between now and 2025. I don't know if I fully trust that time frame, though. It sounds pretty similar to the project to bring back a mammoth by reverse engineering an elephant. And also like the mammoth projects, the time frame always seems to be a little bit optimistic. I mean, to be fair, it does sound like they're actually closer to getting a chickensaurus than a mammothant. So who knows? Maybe it is right around the corner. I certainly hope it is. Or do I? Let's get a little bit serious for a second. Should we make this creature? I mean, with the mammoths, the idea is that they could help with the permafrost and help combat climate change. Though a lot of people think you could fund other projects that would be better at combating climate change. But what even is the Chickensaurus? It's taking something that's already a dinosaur and modifying it just so it superficially resembles something that the public thinks a dinosaur should look like. The aforementioned Mary Schweitzer also seems a bit cautious of the idea. If we were to put these animals in the wild, we probably need a few hundred to maintain a viable breeding population. And as Mary pointed out, where are we going to put them? And which modern species are you going to drive to extinction so that dinosaurs have a place again on this planet? We might be able to put one in a zoo for people to spend zillions of dollars to come and look at, but is that fair to the animal? I see what she's saying, but I think it might also go another way. I think that as soon as we have a viable specimen, we have a living dinosaur, a nice big company is going to step in and patent the living daylights out of it, buying up whatever labs and research they need to produce pet dinosaurs. I think the demand for having a pet dinosaur will be pretty huge. And since they're just funky looking chickens, they shouldn't be that difficult to keep. There's an interesting post on dinosaurculture.com on a breakdown of how much a pet chickensaurus would cost before you buy its food, water, and pen or whatever. Just the cost of the actual animal. And they estimated it to be around 20 bucks. They looked at the price of producing and running a lab and the current price of chickens to get to an estimate. Now, maybe they're spot on, but I feel like the company or companies or whatever aren't going to say, well, we can make them for pretty cheap all things considered, so let's charge a reasonable price. I think they are more likely to be like, we can sell dinosaurs, we are rich. The question no longer becomes whether or not we should or could, it's how much can we charge? If people are willing to pay over a thousand dollars for a phone, how much would they pay for a dinosaur? I don't know, but probably a lot. But should dinosaurs be mass produced just to be a pet? I mean, I guess a lot of animals are mass produced for humans already, but I don't know. The kid inside me wants a pet dinosaur, sure, but would I really get one? Would you buy one? Ooh.